Okay, sustainability. Um, so we use this to basically make sure that we're not going to overuse resources, um, that we can continue to have them for the future. Um, sustainability is really that, that concept of keeping the um, resources available for future generations. Um, it has like the four sort of pillars, right? There's the socioeconomic aspects, um, how well people are taken care of, um, um, whether they have, you know, funding and everything. Um, and then there's the environmental aspect as well. And you can see in this um, image, um, kind of an assessment of that. Um, we have environmental indicators and ecological footprints, which can help us assess sustainability. Um, so lichens will tell you about air quality. We looked at macro invertebrates in rivers to look at water quality, right? We saw a higher biodiversity and cleaner water. Um, you also can use abiotic indicators as well. Um, and then the ecological footprint is basically going to be all of the different land and water materials used to support your lifestyle. Um, and then environmental impact assessments will help to determine whether development is sustainable or not. Um, and these uh, sort of take a lot of different forms based on where you are, but basically you have some kind of project, maybe you want to build a new shopping mall and you have to do this environmental impact assessment. And then you might get totally approved or you might actually be rejected um, and then have to kind of make adjustments to account for that. Um, so sustainable, um, sustainability is the use and management of resources allowing for full natural replacement of the resources and full recovery of those ecosystems as well. Um, so this kind of depends on which type of resource you're using, right? So a forest will replenish itself a lot more quickly than oil will. Um, some of them are renewable resources versus non-renewable resources. Um, so it's really about how quickly those resources are being replenished. And that actually could depend on where you are in the world too, right? So if you're in a very wet area, your aquifers might regenerate really quickly versus here in the desert where aquifers regenerate over thousands of years sometimes. Um, so it's much more likely that will use the water unsustainably in the desert because it doesn't naturally replace itself very quickly. Um, natural capital is basically the same idea as natural resources. Um, basically all the uh, uh, possible goods and services we could take from the environment. Um, and then natural income is actually the stuff that we're gonna take. So natural capital is basically the total amount, the potential um, that we could use. And again, goods are those physical aspects, the things we could touch, use, sell, buy, et cetera. Whereas services are not really monetary usually, things like providing clean air or drinking water or providing erosion control, et cetera. Um, so the real connection with sustainability is how you're using your natural income. The natural income is, is that yield that you're actually taking from the natural resources, from the natural capital. Um, so really nice illustration here um, where we can see the natural capital, um, which provides goods and services. Um, so we could look at say a forest and that forest will have an annual yield. The annual yield is gonna be how much, how much the trees are actually growing in a given year. And so you figure out the annual yield and that's the maximum um, amount you can take without deplenishing the resource, right? So if you say, so you have like 10 new trees a year. If you try to take more than 10 trees, you're actually gonna be depl um, depleting that resource. Um, and then same with things like fisheries, right? How many fish are being born every year? Um, how much are they growing? If you try to take more than that, you're actually gonna to start to, to deplenish the fishery. Um, ecosystems provide life supporting services as well as goods. Um, lots of different examples here. Maybe you can identify which one is which. Uh, so we can use different factors to uh, assess the, uh, the quality of the environment, basically to assess the sustainability. Um, and these different factors will actually directly affect how sustainable um, a different ecosystem is. Um, so biodiversity, obviously a huge um, factor. More biodiversity leads to more stability uh, and which could eventually make it more sustainable. Um, as we saw with the aquatic streams, more pollution led to a lower biodiversity. Um, so obviously less pollution is gonna be more sustainable. Um, human populations, right? As we have more people on earth, there's gonna be a more need for resources. So actually the global um, ecological footprint will grow. 
Um, but it really depends on how people are living, right? If they're trying to live like Americans and Europeans, it will be a much larger ecological footprint than if they were living like many other countries in the world. Um, and finally, uh, the climate, right? If we have stable levels of greenhouse gases, that'll lead to stable temperatures and higher sustainability. Um, so this is from the Millennium Assessment on the Environment. Um, and you can kind of see um, over time, right? From 1990 to 2005, how these different factors have changed. So we have improving here in the blue and then uh, red color um, showing for worsening indicators. So not so good for the atmosphere, the oceans, um, though we've actually improved um, the ozone layer since then. Um, that Millennium Eco, uh, Ecosystem Assessment kind of gave us an overall appraisal of the uh, trends in the world's ecosystems. Um, and it's not been very good. There's been a huge loss in biodiversity in the past 50 years. Um, we've gained a lot in human health and wealth, but we've lost a lot of those natural systems. I've seen some reports that upwards of 95% plus of the world's natural ecosystems have been changed in some way, mostly for human development. Um, so EIAs, environmental impact assessments, are used to basically assess the impacts of a project um, before you do it. Um, so you can suggest other strategies, mitigation strategies to try to reduce those impacts. So if you're building like a new hotel or something, um, you'd want to look at those impacts. Um, they give decision makers information um, on what could happen because of that project. A lot of times they'll actually provide several different options and scenarios, and then you figure out which one is the most feasible. Um, one of the big criticisms is that there's not really a lot of, um, you know, standard practice or like, um, it's not a lot of standardized, I guess, it could be different in each place that you are. So each country might have different rules, even other states might have different rules or different counties might have different rules. So um, you might have more protection in one place, less protection in another place. And if you're a business operating in multiple places, you might have to go through different systems to try to complete your project. So it could be a little bit um, tedious in that case. Um, again, ecological footprints, just the amount of land and water used to provide um, resources for you. Um, and it really depends on your lifestyle, um, where you live, what kind of foods you eat, how you're traveling, et cetera. Um, so example IV style questions explain the relationship between natural capital, income, and sustainability. So of course the capital um, will provide the income. Um, and if you go above that annual yield, you'll be unsustainable. So if you want to stay sustainable, you want to keep your extraction equal to or less than the annual yield. There's lots of different values for ecosystem services. Some of these are you know, really tangible things like drinking water and wood and um, food and stuff like that. Other, others are uh, a little bit more less tangible, right? You know, beauty, um, service and stewardship, recreation activities, things like that. Um, discuss how environmental indicators such as the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment can be used to evaluate the progress of a project to increase sustainability. Um, so how could we use this assessment of the um, earth systems to actually create a more sustainable future, right? Or how can looking at the impact of a project help to make sure that that project is sustainable? And then evaluate the use of EIAs and explain the relationship between ecological footprints and sustainability. Uh, once again, you can find the link to this in the description if you would like more information.